Welcome everyone um, to uh, what is actually the 21st virtual symposium uh, on CC um, CH functionalization. The, these are meetings that have been held by the um, NSF Center for Selective CH Functionalization, uh, sharing a, a broad perspective related to uh, the recent advances in the field. And, and typically these, these talks have been tended to be more focused towards graduate students, although several undergrads have joined these talks as well. And we thought today it'd be great to have a slightly different perspective, giving, giving us a broader perspective of what is meant by CH functionalization. Um, definitely some interesting new aspects of the work, but also uh, giving some appropriate background. So it's a more appropriate for, for undergraduate students as well. Okay, so um, I'm delighted to have uh, with me uh, three, three of uh, our uh, colleagues within the NSF Center. Uh, so I will begin with introducing CH functionalization. Uh, this will be forward, uh, uh, followed by uh, Cora Macbeth, who will talk about the role of catalysts in this area. And then finally, we will think about how it, it involves broadly strategies of synthesis. And so we're delighted to have one of the experts in that area, Richmond Sarpong from UC Berkeley joining us as well. Okay, so if we think about CH functionalization, so if we think about CH functionalization uh, from a sophomore organic perspective, uh, one has a big problem. So uh, where is CH functionalization in the sophomore organic course? Because uh, of course, uh, the typical course focuses on a lot of functional groups, like for example, alkenes, alkynes, and benzene derivatives, and how they're involved in various types of uh, reactions with electrophiles. Alkenes do electrophilic addition, benzene does more electrophilic substitution. We're also very used to alkyl halides and alcohols doing various types of substitution reactions. Uh, aldehydes and ketones, of course, and the various addition reactions and the whole family of the carboxylic acid derivatives. But there doesn't seem to be much of a space for CH functionalization. And if one looks very hard, probably at the smallest chapter within the sophomore organic textbook, you'll find something. And that is that chapter on alkanes, which, which basically is probably the the least number of reactions possible because alkanes are pretty inert type of systems. And indeed in that chapter, you will see one classic CH functionalization reaction, which is free radical halogenation. And particularly the reaction where you're doing free radical bromination uh, actually represent a pretty interesting CH functionalization reaction uh, involving radical chemistry, uh, chemistry because uh, the reaction occurs uh, selectively at the tertiary CH bond because the tertiary radical is the most stable of those uh, uh, sites in that molecule. And, and even though um, in general, uh, various um, alkane transformations like petroleum cracking, there are some very important industrial processes that relate to functionalization of alkanes. In general, uh, the, the scope of, of uh, focusing on chemistry on the CH bonds is, is rather limited. And so for the la se last several years, I've been very fortunate to be a member of this Center for Selective CH Functionalization that is trying to find ways of, of actually achieving a totally different logic on how to think about making molecules instead of thinking about the functional groups we've seen before in the sophomore organic textbook, now thinking about how to do reactions selectively at CH bonds. Now, if one could do that, then the opportunities are huge. So let me just illustrate two sort of hypothetical situations. So the molecule on the left is um, uh, the, the ester of cholesterol. And, and uh, so one might be interested in making derivatives of cholesterol. And, and so I've introduced a group X at, at some potential sites in this molecule. Now, if one needed to make these molecules from start, these simple starting materials, each, each compound would involve a, an extensive synthetic sequence. 
But if you could do late stage CH functionalization and control where the CH bond will be functionalized, then this would be a result of down to a one, one step transformation from the readily available cholesterol. The other aspect that is very interesting, and you're going to hear much more about this in detail from, from Professor Sarpong later on, is, is the idea of offering entirely new strategies for synthesis. So for example, this molecule cylindrocyclophane is actually one that my group is interested in making through CH functionalization. And, and so the idea of this, and this is a hypothetical here on the right, is instead of worrying about all the functional groups one typically uh, needs to do uh, when one is making a complex target, one can concentrate on doing selective reactions at CH bonds. Now, obviously in this particular sequence, this would be an incredibly challenging uh, endeavor and one would need to think about strategically how this could possibly be done. But this just illustrates a concept of a totally different way of thinking about putting molecules together. So the question is, so what's so hard about CH functionalization? Well, the big issue is, is the idea of selectivity. Because first of all, obviously the CH bonds are really strong. So you need to have a really reactive reagent to be able to do chemistry on CH bonds. And once you've been able to do that, what, what's the chances of being able to distinguish between this, these different CH bonds? So get control of which CH bond is functionalized. And so over the last 20, 30 years, there's been a lot of interest in trying to develop this concept of site selectivity. Definitely some of the most established ways relies on substrate control. And, and as we saw with the free radical chemistry, the tertiary CH bond is more susceptible to homolysis than the other CH bonds. And indeed, there are lots of major advances in, in radical chemistry these days to, to achieve site selectivity because the molecule has a particular preferred site of, of functionalization. Uh, and this involves um, uh, the, some of the recent advances in photoredox chemistry that involve radical processes, really exciting advances uh, to build this chemistry further. Another conceptually new approach is to use metals to control uh, the, the CH functionalization through uh, CH activation where the metal inserts into the CH bond. And to do that, one uses directing groups that coordinate to the metal and so acts like a relay then to be able to do the CH activation. Now, both of these approaches uh, are, are limited by what the substrate allows, because you either have to have some activating group or directing group to allow this process to work. And, and the, the way we're trying to approach it in the center is more through catalyst control. Uh, and, and not only us, but several groups are trying to do this. In other words, um, you may still have something that's helping to direct uh, the metal to coordinate uh, to the system, but then the ligands and the, the, around the metal uh, dis decide which CH bond will be functionalized. So it's very much under catalyst control. And we're also interested in having situations where there's actually no directing groups, no prior coordination, and just the shape of the catalyst and how it behaves will control which CH bond is functionalized. So, so in terms of the directed CH functionalization, the general concept has been around for a long time. Uh, indeed, there's a very famous reaction called the hoffmann lafleur freitag reaction that, that is based on this concept. And you can see the, the initial uh, studies were done in 1909, uh, so a very long time ago. And the idea of this, if you have, a, have a, an alkane, a functionality with lots of CH bonds, then you could do a directed reaction by carrying out the reaction intramolecularly. So in this case, you have this N-bromo compound that under a, a phot a photolysis will, will cleave the nitrogen bromine bond to generate these two radicals. But this is generated in close proximity to the CH bond. So it'll abstract the hydrogen uh, to generate, the nitrogen will abstract the hydrogen to generate this uh, new benzylic radical, which will combine with the bromine to lead to the overall CH functionalization. And as this hydrogen abstraction likes to occur through a five-membered ring, there's a set 
a CH bond that be directed for this CH functionalization. Now that concept has been extended to metal catalyzed directed CH functionalization. And really one of the major papers in this, year, in this area was in 1993, uh, describing how this ruthenium catalyst could actually uh, coordinate to the carbonyl, placing the ruthenium close to the CH bond. So you can go through that CH activation step. And so now you've got a, a regular organometallic species that can react with the alkene to finish off doing this alkylation. Now this type of reaction has become very, very extensively studied. It's now established as a valuable synthetic strategy. Indeed, if you, if you look at the sort of type of publications on terms like directed CH functionalization or directed CH activation, you're, we're now well over a thousand papers a year in this general area. In contrast, the idea of the catalyst controlled concept CH functionalization is, is, is not as extensive and is, is still building up a lot of steam. And, and in certain regards, uh, this is much more challenging because obviously you still got to distinguish between the CH bonds, but if you can do it, it has the potential of being uh, much more uh, valuable from the point of view of uh, not relying on distinct major features within the molecule to control where the chemistry will happen. And so the, the classic uh, mechanism of these direct uh, to, to, uh, process, there are many, many cat metals that can do this. One of the mo most widely used is palladium. And the palladium can do it by several different mechanisms in actual fact, but this is just illustrating one uh, and, and basically what, what happens is, is a reaction that has some similarities to uh, the famous Suzuki coupling. In other words, you have a palladium zero that undergoes uh, an oxidative addition to generate a palladium two. But this palladium two, instead of you know, reacting with uh, an aryl boron reagent, now reacts with, with aryl uh, hydrogen here. And basically the, the ligand X helps to remove the, the hydrogen to give you HX. And in the process, introduce that phenyl ring without a change in oxidation state on the metal. Then this is followed by a reductive elimination uh, and completing the catalytic cycle. And what's really exciting is that there are several variants on this basic concepts, uh, making this and the other types of transformations uh, with, with wide, broad applicability. Uh, let me show you an exciting, re very recent example from Jin Kuan Yu, who's one of the major players in this area, and one of our uh, colleagues in the center. And so this is a reaction on this cyclopropyl uh, methylamine. So it's got an amino group here, and that amino group will coordinate to the palladium and allow a CH functionalization, a CH activation to occur at this CH bond. But this reaction has a special ligand, uh, has this ligand present. And this reaction is under catalyst ligand control because there is an enantioselective reaction with this CH bond dysfunctionalized, but not the other. And so once one has now this metallocycle intermediate, now it's possible to do a wide variety of other transformations leading to these very valuable, highly functionalized chiral cyclopropane amine derivatives uh, through one key CH functionalization step. Uh, the way that we approach uh, CH functionalization is, is basically by doing what we call carbine-induced CH insertion. And this is the basic cycle that's involved here. So you start off with a catalyst, the type of catalyst we use are rhodium based, and I'll show you those a little later on. And we basically react these with diazo compounds uh, to form a rhodium carbene intermediate. This is the transition state. It will lose nitrogen. Nitrogen, of course, is extremely stable. So this is the driving force for this reaction. And in the process, generate this very reactive metal carbene. Now this metal carbene is reactive enough to actually do a CH functionalization by inserting this carbene into the CH bond. It basically begins to pull off the hydrogen 
and finishes off inserting that carbene into that carbon hydrogen bond, leading to the product and completing the catalytic cycle. The challenge, of course, is to, is to be able to control this chemistry. And so uh, with, with this basic carbene system, it actually will react with molecules like uh, this molecule here without any functional groups, just the CH bond. So what you find if you bring this particular reagent in, this is the compound that's got the nitrogen that's gonna be lost to generate the carbene. What you can now do is serious catalyst control. So if you use one particular catalyst, it would prefer, it's, it's a crowded catalyst. So uh, it prefers to go for this methylene site and will distinguish it from the other methylene site. If you use a less crowded catalyst, uh, it will go for the tertiary CH bond. If you use an incredibly crowded catalyst, it will go for the primary CH bond uh, in preference to all the others. And you can even be more subtle in the type of catalyst you can use to actually get differentiation between different CH2 groups from each other as well. And so this just illustrates some of the structures of some of these catalysts are involved here. Uh, to finish off, let me show you a specific reaction with a specific catalyst. So this is one of our catalysts. It's a dirhodium complex so that basically self-assembles to generate uh, this, this uh, catalyst that, that uh, adopts a bowl shape. And basically the carbene will actually do its reaction at this central rhodium. But once it's bound to th this rhodium, there's a whole wall around it. So only certain CH bonds can approach it. And just to illustrate one example, we talked early on about uh, the, uh, uh, cholesterol, acetyl cholesterol. And so uh, it has actually 48 hydrogens, 36 different hydrogens, but this combination with this catalyst will react only with the most accessible tertiary CH bond. So only this one is, is functionalized to give rise to this product. So this is the type of just one example of the type of control one can have now in a small transition metal catalyzed uh, CH functionalization. There is also a big catalyst that are generating a huge amount of interest these days. Here's an example from Frances Arnold who got the Nobel Prize recently. Uh, and basically what she's doing is she's able to do in vitro evolution of enzymes. So there are many enzymes in nature that do uh, oxidation reaction, including CH oxidation, uh, and they can be remarkably selective. Uh, but what she's been able to do is evolve these natural enzymes into unnatural enzymes that can do unnatural chemistry, including nitrine chemistry. And here's a very significant example that came out in nature where it's actually doing carbene chemistry. And you can see here that here are many examples of the type of reactions as possible. And you can see these reactions uh, go with very good in anti-selectivity uh, as, as well as good site selectivity. So this is a really exciting opportunity for the further development of site selective transformations. Okay, so to finish off, uh, I'd like to acknowledge my group. There's been a remarkable team uh, conducting a lot of different research programs related to CH functionalization, as well as the amazing team in the center, which is so highly collaborative. This just shows the links and all the collaborations that have been achieved between different professors within the center. So it's been a great team to be involved with and very exciting. And I'm really excited that we have two of our great colleagues in the center uh, presenting next. One about the importance of designing those catalysts. That is such an important underpinning of the chemistry. And then showcasing the opportunities that the chemistry can do in terms of thinking about its use in total synthesis. Okay, thanks very much.